G'day folks, welcome back to another in this uh, series on investment in shares and uh, this is going to be a short video but it's such a critical one and it's about how to plan your investment strategy. So what I use is a very structured thinking process and there are numerous elements that can derail investors that make this structured thinking process just so important. These elements are just the day-to-day -day market gyrations that keep sending conflicting signals to investors. Sometimes we see prices go up or go down completely in conflict with maybe an announcement that the company's made and that really confuses investors. We have the media who is constantly looking to sensationalize with either a lot of hype or a lot of doom and gloom and that makes it very difficult for investors to uh, continue with a consistent line of thought. Family and colleagues generally have views uh, taken from the media about being in the market or not being in the market and if you think and act like the masses then you're going to get the same results that the masses get and that's generally extremely poor results. The next thing is that we all have our own biases that play out at a subconscious level, things that we're either very positive about or very negative about. And so that can influence our investing decisions significantly. So the biggest enemy to successful investing is us. It's our natural human tendency to want to make investments on an ad hoc basis. We don't like to be constrained by having to develop a structure and a plan. So what do you need in this process of structured thinking that needs to be done every single time the same way? The way that I do it is to use a sequential thought pattern from the big picture down. You then need some confidence to stay with the approach that you're using and you need to maintain good emotional control and normally it's difficult for most investors to do that without some kind of guidance for a period of time until they can generate that confidence for themselves. So what is a good structure? What does it look like? Well the first thing that I look for is what market phase we're in and we'll have a look at that on the next slide. The next thing is I make a decision about the percentage of capital that I want to have in the market as a total or as a percentage of the total funds that I have available. The third level that I then come down to is I look at the amount of capital I'm going to allocate to the various segments and I divide the market into three segments non-resource opportunities, precious metals opportunities and other resource opportunities other than gold. So once I've done that the next thing that I do then is I look at the individual stock selection and then I come down to the actual entry timing. So it's a cascade of thinking from the big picture down to the specific stock and the specific entry timing. So let's have a look at each one of those elements. Now the market phase is really important because it does impact sentiment and money flows into and out of the market significantly. Phase one occurs when people are pretty negative about the market and what we're looking for in phase one is when there's evidence of renewed buying starting up. The main buying opportunities occur in phase two and ideally in the first part of phase two. So here's a graphic representation of what these various phases look like. So over here on towards the left hand side we've got a significant rise in the share price from around $1.60 to about $3.80. So that was clearly the phase two bull market for this particular stock and buying in that first part of that bull run was obviously a very profitable thing to do. We then get into phase three where we start to see some fairly wild swings. We start to see formations like double tops where the market just can't get itself any higher and that's generally a good indication of the fact that uh, the rise for the time being has run its course. We then go into phase four which is obviously where you definitely don't want to be in the stock or in the market and that generally ends up with some kind of panic sell-off sell at the finish. The price then goes into some kind of phase one consolidation until we start to see that renewed buying interest and then we go back into phase two and it all starts again. So it's just understanding where we are in the overall cycle 
and waiting for those opportunities to present themselves now the next thing that we look at then is the percentage of capital in the market and that is obviously a decision that comes from looking at what phase we're in the market and market sentiment as a whole now it's partly dependent on personal circumstances your need for uh, cash your need for uh, capital to keep available for other opportunities um, so that's very much an individual thing but you should be very clear about how much capital is appropriate for you in the market now as we progress into phase two bull markets we're looking to build our capital up to perhaps 90 percent exposure is is the way that I tend to do it now some stocks may be held through bear markets through phase four declines if their dividend growth performance and their valuation supports it so this is not necessarily a matter of dumping everything that we have as we go into a phase four decline because some stocks can still uh, do quite well they can still hold up quite well and if they're still providing very good dividends then why not hold them then we will look to progressively reduce exposure to well under 50 percent as the market enters phase three now how much we come down under 50 percent depends on how significant the market decline looks as though it's going to be the next thing we then look at is the sector allocation so as I indicated before I personally divide them into three sectors non-resource stocks uh, which tend to be less volatile and obviously less um, Im impacted by sudden moves in overseas markets or sudden moves in commodities because I'm a long-term bull on gold and gold stocks then I really treat precious metals and precious metal stocks in a separate category and then my third allocation is to general re resources now this is a dynamic allocation it depends very much on the market and the commodity cycle at the time so this is not something that's that's fixed it's uh, I'm constantly adjusting this every couple of months according to what the market is doing so once we've done that it's then a matter of the specific stock allocation and each stock has to meet the selection guidelines that we've set and you need to be very clear about what those selection guidelines are now there's a number of things that you can use but the formula that I use that has uh, stood the test of time for for four or five decades in the hands of people like Warren Buffett use things like return on equity the uh, average annual growth in profits uh, the use of conservative debt levels the efficient use of capital by management and of course the growth in dividends so they're the the various uh, check boxes that I need to tick on any investment that I want to make now the final thing is the timing of the buying and the selling process so from a fundamental point of view we want to buy when the price is below fair value we also want to buy when it's technically oversold because that gives us an additional edge stocks can be below fair value for a long period of time and can continue to fall to even cheaper levels so it's not just a matter of buying anywhere under fair value why not get the added benefit of also buying when we've got some technical advantage as well and we're looking to sell when the price gets significantly above fair value and we've seen plenty of examples of great companies that just get ridiculously overpriced and then we'll see 20 25 percent price falls so my view is why not take advantage of that and when prices become uh, too extended to the upside let's take some profit off the table and position ourselves to maybe buy again lower down so that's just the process of thought that I bring to the investing process now we've got a video series starting up which is going to provide a lot more training and a lot more guidance in this regard so it's a real step-by-step -step process to building wealth from shares and I've not been this confident and this excited about the opportunities in the stock market for more than a decade and that's largely because of the actions of central banks in the last few months they've really taken away the risk and the potential of significant downsides so if you'd like to get more information about uh, how this process works then go to our website 
specialistshareeducation.com.au and you can register for that uh, training series. Hope this helps. Cheers.